going on there guys good evening it is earthmaster here on this beautiful friday september 17th is the date 2021 507 p.m california time still pretty soon it's gonna be something different we'll see it is friday what have we got coming in here an earthquake uh 2.8 it looks like on the earthquake 3d globe the uh, latest quake popping up right around uh, let's see exactly where that's at here up in the alaska region a little bit of activity ramping up there over the last 24 hours including some uh, pretty good earthquake activity down here in the fiji and also solomon islands region let's go ahead and check out some of this activity uh around the globe here on the usgs map let's see if i can get this going here i had to reset my computer late last night for some reason not for sure what happened but uh Let's see, hold on a second here. Do 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 do. There we go. All right. Just took a second, but we're back. There is a USGS map showing all the earthquake activity over the last day, 24 hours, 2.5 and above. Just 2.5 and above for now. You can see that 2.8 striking in the Aleutian Trench area, looks like. Actually, that's a 3.1. 2.8 striking way up here. And that's some, somewhat of a deep earthquake, 40 kilometers below surface for that 2.8. Uh, kind of next to this other one here, a little bit of movement kicking up in this area. Um, we had a, what did we have, like a 5.3 yesterday, I believe. No further large scale movement. We're still seeing an increase in activity though in this region. Uh, we did see some movement along the uh, northwestern part of the Pacific Plate. This trench area right here, we had a 5.0 at 81 kilometers and also a pair of earthquakes off the coast of Japan, off the coast of Fukushima, a 4.5 and a 4.4, roughly around 57 kilometers, somewhat deep movement around the Japan trench area. Uh, further down south, the Philippines area, 4.7 striking, 91.3 kilometers below the surface for that one. In the meantime, Quite the uptick in earthquake activity uh, near Vanuatu, including a 5.8, almost a border, uh, almost a six pointer, 10 kilometers below the surface for that one. That was followed up by a little aftershock right there in the 4.8 threshold, just about the same depth there, about 10 kilometers. A little bit further north, after all this movement, we had a, another surface quake at 10 kilometers at a 5.3 level. So quite the increase in activity in this region of the world of course as you head down here deep deep movement follows uh, the earthquakes as they head into the Kermadec Trench and area south uh, west of Tonga uh, movement around New Zealand detected as well including a 3.1 10 kilometers below surface the Hikurangi subduction zone looks pretty quiet for now uh, only a little earthquake up here around the Kermadec Trench region, Kermadec Islands, 4.9, fairly shallow at 10 kilometers below the surface. Hawaii getting in on some activity over the last 24, including some movement around the Mono Loa and the Kilauea volcano. Most of this activity confined into a snake-like figure. Kind of, you can kind of watch that trail of uh, movement there underneath the ground, about 32 kilometers. This activity been occurring for quite some time. I'm talking years in this area uh, we haven't seen anything major happen here uh, lately in this area but man it just it's never ending we can go back on the last 30 days here and uh, just check out the 2.5 and above you can see quite a bit of activity over those 30 days this right here might just crash my computer nope it didn't looking at uh, well almost 2,000 earthquakes uh, within this vicinity if we block out the Kilauea crater area we got 837 just in this area alone on the southeast flank uh, quite a bit of uh, earthquake movement and most of these like i said in the depth around 34 kilometers they all take place around that level uh, what else we got here folks backing out of the beautiful big island i'm gonna get out there one day i'm gonna get out there one day west coast to region a little bit and a little bit of activity ramping up here folks looks about the same as yesterday although we are watching some movement here right outside of the bay area san francisco region talking about the uh, calaveras fault zone working uh, all the way almost all the way down to the southern branch of it seeing the line of earthquake activity south of concord southeast of san jose these are just micro microquakes but still 
uh, some movement taking place almost on that entire fault system there. This one very capable of producing a, a pretty good sized earthquake in a highly populated region. Uh, so we will keep an eye on that. I know that one's kind of a uh, one that geologists are watching pretty closely uh, for significant movement in the near future along with the Hayward Fault. These two uh, fault systems alone, not to mention the San Andreas Fault, are capable of producing some uh, significant sized earthquakes and uh, quite the destruction in the Bay Area. Uh, geyser activity getting in on the hydrothermal pumping or hydrothermal uh, operation that's going on down there. I still got to take a trip down there one of these days and uh, uh, check that out. I want to see what's going on at that plant down there. Line of activity kind of stretching off north of Ukiah as well. A little bit of movement outside of Chico around my neck of the woods. Two Point City near the beautiful town of Hamilton City, California. They got a good taco truck there, that's for sure. Uh, that earthquake 2.0, pretty shallow earthquake just outside of the Sacramento River right there. Mount Shasta, Mount Lassen, all looks pretty, all look pretty quiet right now. The Antelope Valley area seen some movement, but not quite as much as we've seen um, in the past, uh, as far as the past couple weeks go. Long Valley Super Volcano around the Mammoth Lakes as well. Seen a little bit of microquake activity, and also over here near Tonopah, that line of activity stretching through the Candelera Hills. Uh, still showing some movement there a year and a half later following that uh, large quake out there Ridgecrest still seeing some fractured all these all these areas you can see where the fracture zones are folks you can see basically the fault systems where it ruptured uh, including down here in the Ridgecrest area it's all a sign of built up increased pressure folks I think um, you know I'm, I'm not it's possible even even with this release of pressure and build up a, I shouldn't say release of pressure but I guess it's kind of relieving pressure in a way, but it's building up. These, these quakes are building up because of pressure. But I'm thinking when these things start to go extraordinarily quiet, that's when we got to watch out here along the western coast. But who knows? I mean, we could still see all this activity inland and get a major player here on the southern San Andreas Fault section. It's just, you just never know. I mean, that's why I look at all these maps daily and, and study them and pay attention to what's going on um, not only inland in the North American plate I'm talking about Utah Yellowstone all this activity here gives me a good indication of what's going on over here along the West Coast when we see heightened earthquake activity over here we tend to see earthquake activity ramping up through the Sierras and the coastal ranges as well um, that's an obvious sign of some uh, regional large pressure taking place and it looks like that's kind of happening over the last 24 hours uh, did see some movement around the Tehachapi area as well. A little uh, 2 point, uh, what is that, 2.2? If I can click on, or 2.1, there we go. Uh, pretty shallow, 5.3 kilometers. San Andreas Fault for now looks fairly quiet. Riverside area and the San Jacinto Fault area southward all showing activity. But this is pretty typical for a uh, California day. The Salton Sea region, absolutely quiet for now. Imperial Fault, little 3.7 south of the border. Uh, working our way up north into the Oregon region. A little bit of activity ramping up around the Mount St. Helens area and also Mount Rainier. Nothing really specifically uh, on the noteworthy side, just kind of a couple microquakes into the uh, Strait of Juan de Fuca and the Pacific Northwest around Seattle. Very quiet. No microquakes to report in that area right now. Yellowstone National Park, yes, uh, swarm looks like it is kind of continuing a little bit. Let's go ahead and check out the latest map here. This is the overview of Yellowstone National Park with Yellowstone Caldera uh, outlined in the black ring or the uh, black outline right here. Yellowstone Lake sits over here, uh, kind of an overview of northwestern Wyoming. There's some of that earthquake activity. You can see it pretty strongly on Mary Lake. This is defined localized earthquakes. You cannot get any more obvious than that when it comes to detecting earthquake activity on a seismograph. This is what you look for when you see earthquakes. This is what earthquakes look like. Um, so over the last couple hours or so, nothing, I mean, it's hard to tell when that shadow of, of uh, noise is what I'm gonna call it. Let me see what's going on up there in the, uh, on the radar system. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't see any thunderstorms and whatnot. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the zoom earth map. Okay. 
Um, I know we got a low pressure system here off the west coast going to come in bring us a shot of rain. Pacific Northwest getting some sub, some substantial rainfall amounts up there. I wish we got half of what they get. Still a lot of smoke from California uh, down south and also up here northwest of me. Uh, but there is some pretty good wind picking up here around the Yellowstone area up to 22 miles per hour sustained winds it looks like. So uh, a lot of that movement could possibly be registering on the uh, on the seismographs as wind noise. We see it a lot in the wintertime and it shows up on pretty much all the stations that are locally tuned uh, as far as like uh, um, they're basically locally tuned the correct way. Some of these stations are just completely squashed out to where nothing, nothing picks up at all. There's nothing. Bigfoot could walk over the seismograph and nada. We'd never know he was up there. But most of these are tuned correct, correctly and accurately where they should be when it comes to monitoring Yellowstone activity. And that, I believe, is wind noise being picked up here within the last couple hours, showing up significantly on most of the stations. Um, but yeah, so some of the earthquake activity definitely kicking up. There's a lot more than what the USGS is showing. Um, but some of these, you know, it's going to take a little bit of measurement. Some of these might be 0 0.05, you know, like half of a 0.1. They're pretty small. A majority of these are extremely small earthquakes. Here's a map of that uh, Yellowstone area. Once again, you can see about 28 earthquakes or so in this region. And you can see most of these, look at that, negative 0.2. Most of these are all microquakes here, folks. The majority, actually all of these are. And they're ranging from uh, some variable depths there, two down to about 10 kilometers. Uh, there's one right there, 0.7 down to uh, about 11 kilometers. So a little bit of movement taking place there in the Yellowstone National Park. Not uncommon, folks. It does happen from time to time. And it's kind of cool to watch, actually. Pretty neat. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of activity ramp up into the Texas region around Midland and also Pecos, Texas getting in on some of the activity as well. Not as significant as days past, but an obvious sign of increase around the North American plate and the North American craton. Oklahoma, pretty quiet. The new Madrid fault area, seeing a little bit of movement near Wrig Wrigley, Tennessee, and also over here in the Arkansas region. Uh, had a 2.2, pretty shallow earthquake there. It shows point zero let's see if it's been reviewed it has been reviewed that's kind of interesting there reviewed depth of about wow all right definitely got to keep an eye on the new madrid fault area that's for sure east coast pretty quiet and the puerto rico area getting pretty quiet as well we're not seeing too much earthquake activity in the last 24 south america region kind of dying down as well but we're still seeing a little bit of deeper movement 4.4 at 217 kilometers uh, around the uh uh, what do we got there? Chile area. That one's 217 and a little bit further north. Another one at 104 kilometers for that 4.3. But things kind of calming down here. Puerto Rico calming down. Uh, Atlantic calming down as well. And the South Sandwich Islands not really rocking too much today. Most of the activity appears to be on the Pacific Plate in general. Right now kind of watching the uh, region th uh, down south here near Solomon Islands. Fiji area. Uh, Papua New Guinea as well. A lot of deep movement here within the last few days and today. Got to keep an eye on that region also up here in Japan. But uh, can't roll out the west coast either. One of these days things are going to really rock and roll out here and it's not going to be pretty. Uh, let's see what else we got here folks. Not a whole lot going on in the trimmer department. Uh, I know we had some last night in Northern California. It's going to be about another hour or so before I get the updated uh, trimmer from the PNSN network. All right, guys, have a good day out there. <clears throat> we will chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe.